This is Kevin from Performance Trends. People often ask, how can I tell if a, a cam I've measured has produced good data? And the easiest way that I know of is to make a graph. And when you make a graph, uh, include the acceleration data. So you're going to graph lift and acceleration. And you're going to get a graph of lift like you're typically used to see in a cam profile and acceleration and this is a very typical acceleration graph where there's a, a peak at the beginning where you get the valve train moving and then the valve train opens and slows and then it starts coming back down closing the valve and then over here on the closing ramp you get another acceleration and you see through the middle of the profile it's a fairly smooth negative acceleration well one thing to look at first here is you can put a different amount of filtering on the acceleration and if you put no filtering on the acceleration you get a graph like this which you know is pretty much useless it's pretty hard to read anything so typically what we say is put as much filtering on it as you need to uh, have the graph make some sense now this is pretty good but you can see there's still a lot of jerkiness around so if we go here and moderate is pretty good if you got to go to heavy this probably stay kind of wrong but this is a pretty typical acceleration curve here's a profile and acceleration curve for a different cam and you can see this one looks a little bit different it's got a little bit of a of a bump here a dip down that goes back up and on the closing ramp here a little bit of it goes down and comes back up typically that's an indication of a solid cam uh, that is expecting lash and typically the, the bottom of this uh, dip here is here it's about six thou and over here it's about ten thou that gives you some idea of what it thinks the, a good lash point would be now you got to remember that's at ten thou on the cam and uh, when you go through rocker ratio stuff it's going to be a different number than what you expect but anyway this is sort of an indication of a uh, a solid cam that is expecting a last point. And you can see the other trends are the same. A peak at the beginning, a peak at the close, and somewhat smooth axle through the entire profile. Now what can happen is, let's say you uh, don't understand how virtual follower works or something. And uh, with this cam, we put the actual flat tap that you can see here on the cam. Follow type of standard flat. But let's say you didn't know how virtual follower works. You said, I want to do a virtual flat. And you made a mistake here. You said, I had the Anosaki tip, the linear encoder tip directly on the cam, but you actually didn't. You had the flat tap it on the cam when you made the measurement. But you said here by mistake, I had the small tip on the cam and uh, and I want you to simulate what a flat tap it would be. And the nice thing about our software is you can make a change after the fact and salvage your test. It's going through all these calculations now as if this had been your setting before you'd actually tested it. So we're going to do a graph now where we have an error in our setup and you can see here you still have the accelerations, the big one at the beginning and a big one at the close, but they're very, very high and very sharp. And you can actually see this profile looks very fat. And where you have these big accelerations here, if you zoom in, draw a little box around it, you can see that doesn't look like what you'd want in a cam profile. That's some big jumps and sharp corners here. and That's not what you want in a cam. You want this to be nice and a nice smooth transition. So this again, go full view of this, looking at the accelerations could tell you you got a problem with what you've just done. Now here's a cam profile that was measured and you can see it's got the big peak at the beginning and a big peak at the end. But during the the lift here, the lift curve, you can see these accelerations are telling me kind of smooth through here. We have a big bump here. And if you go up here to the lift profile, you can see, yeah, it actually looks like there's a little bit of a bump on the profile there. So we're going to get rid of the cursor and we're going to zoom in on this, see what that looks like. And you can see, yeah, look at that. Something's wrong there. 
Now, it could be real. If you see something like this, what you do is you measure the cam again and overlay the graphs and say, yeah, that's that's there if it repeats. If it doesn't repeat, something you did, uh, the lift encoder was sticking a little bit or the lifter was sticking in the lifter bore. Something was wrong. Uh, go to full view and let's see over here. This looks like a little bit out of line here. And that looks like it's about right here. And you can see it here. It looks like a little bit of a divot here. And then it goes back up. And you can kind of tell that it looks a little bit funny. Now, if you just look at this, you'd never notice it. But the acceleration curve is pointing this out. Now, what the acceleration is, is the rate of change of lift, which is velocity, and then the rate of change of that, which is acceleration. Uh, velocity doesn't show this stuff up as, as much as acceleration. So that's why I go to acceleration. Jerk is a little bit too much. Uh, a lot of things will look like jerk that are probably okay. But acceleration is a very good, uh, it's got this very typical pattern, a peak at the beginning, a peak at the end, and through the middle of the profile, you know, it's typically kind of smooth through here. And you can see here, it's pointing out there are some problems on this profile. Now here's a very unusual acceleration curve. And you look at the cam lift profile, you can see that looks very funny. It looks like a wave with this big uh, rise here. And that's what this is telling you. That's a very big rise in the lift, and that's a very big negative acceleration. So this looks pretty different than what we've seen. It's got the bump at the beginning. It's got the bump at the close. But during the middle, it's got this big spike there. And you can see this lift profile looks funny. Well, this thing is the cam data but this is for a finger follower overhead cam rocker arm and you'll if you start doing these the overhead cam rocker arms you'll find that they do a lot of funny things to make the valve lift look normal and if what we do here is we're gonna i'm gonna take this and i'm gonna graph out the valve lift and the valve acceleration here including the cam lift and cam acceleration and you can see it still is got a, a big spike here, but it's really knocked it down. And this is going through the virtual follower valve lift calculations. And to be honest, I just put in some numbers to make it reasonable. These may not match this uh, engine. And, uh, and if we had the inputs, I'll show you in a second you would see that this probably would be very normal. This would not have this sort of a spike here and then come back down. But it just shows you how much the virtual follower for these overhead cam rocker arms will change what's happening. The cam data is what was actually on the cam, but the valve is what the valve is doing, and that's what you care about, what the valve is doing. Now, the other things I didn't show you that because when you got a typical push rod, a simple rocker arm, what the valve is doing and what the cam is doing are pretty much the same thing, except for multiplying by the rocker ratio and dropping out the lash. And I don't like to do that because at the lash point, there typically can be some funny accelerations there. So I like to typically do cam accelerations, not valve accelerations. But I just show you here. Uh, this is. Uh, what we're simulating this, I just stuck in the defaults just to get something close. And uh, so, I mean, but it just, just to make the point that how you set these up, if you went through and put all these numbers in to accurately reflect what your motor was, you would probably see a pretty normal uh, valve lift and valve acceleration curve. But that is basically uh, how you use acceleration to help troubleshoot that you've got good measurements.